Okay, today is um, something like May 31st, I would say, 2008. We're at the log cabin celebrating the bat mitzvah of Eliana Golsher, and we have with us tonight Morton Slavin. And Morton, we'd like to ask you about your memories of growing up in Springfield, mm -hmm. your parents, where they came from. Let's start with that. Okay. <coughs> Their names and where they came from. <coughs> Their names were uh, see, Max and Minnie Slavin and my gra the grandparents, Max and Minnie Slavin, and Harris and Toby Cohn. And Max and Minnie immigrated from uh, Europe, I believe it was Vilna area, when they were both about 15 or 16. And they came to Springfield and started, a, he was in the business of, uh, <coughs> I guess, poultry. He was a poultry merchant. And he had six children. Uh, Abraham, Lewis, Lily. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, and um, we, uh, I was originally born in uh, Chicopee, Massachusetts. We lived in Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts. What year were you? How old are you about now? I'm 87. Okay. And uh, we moved to Springfield when I was about four. Forest Park section of Springfield. What street? Right next what's, to the park. Virgi Vir Virginia Street and Trafton Road. Okay. Why did you move to that section? I have no idea. I think, I think it was a thing. Uh, my grandparents had a dry goods store in Chicopee Falls. What was it called? I don't know. Okay. And uh, my grandmother was a amicus curiae for the court because she could speak many languages. And she would interpret the immigrants coming in. And uh, they also had this little dry goods store and that helped getting customers for the store. And uh, they had two children. There three children, two, a boy and a girl who died, and my mother, Celia. And what did they do? Did they move the dry goods store to Springfield? No, no, they came to Springfield. My grandfather got into the, uh, he was in real estate. Uh -huh. and, what's, and what synagogue did your... Uh, Kadima, Kadima Synagogue. Your grandparents, too? Yeah. How involved were they in the synagogue? Uh, they were members every, every Saturday. Uh, I don't remember going on Friday nights, but every Saturday we would walk through, uh, we could walk to the synagogue through Forest Park from where we lived. We walk across the park to the synagogue. I remember the synagogue, the beautiful dome and all of marble, and, and uh, I do have very, very warm memories of growing up there. Can you remember the rabbi? Oh, rabbi Klein, and he was very active during the war as a chaplain. And he did a lot of work with the uh, the uh, people who were in the concentration camps. Right at Klein. And Rabbi McGill, who I think was before Klein. Can you recall your Jewish education, what it was like? My Jewish education was a, uh, a problem for my parents because I was not the least bit interested. And uh, we had a, a group of rabbis who would come to the house and teach me. And I also had uh, went to Sunday school and some sort of a hater at uh, Kadima, and I would go to the bathroom and climb out the bathroom window and run up in the park and play. So uh, I was not, not a great, uh, not a great scholar. Natalie Plotkin. And what was your Wait maiden? What was your maiden? On her. What was your maiden name? My maiden name was Steinberg. And where did you grow up? I grew up in Boston, but I moved to Orange, Massachusetts when I was in high school. What brought you to move? How come you moved to Orange? Uh, my uncle was a doctor in Orange, and uh, my dad was interested in opening a business there, and my uncle called my dad and told him that there was a hardware store available in Orange, and so we moved to Orange, Massachusetts. What was the name of the hardware store? Town. The town Hardware. And about what year was that, would you say, that they opened the store? Approximately. Uh, about 1946. Uh -huh. Were there any other Jewish families in Orange at that time? Well, my uncle was one. Right. And Sam Footnick. Yeah. Sam Footnick? Yeah. That was my, my uncle. Uh huh. And there were Plotkins. Right. There were Plotkins there. Uh, there they was, overran the town, as yeah. a matter of fact. Uh, uh, it uh, was almost called Plotkinville because there was a Plotkin furniture, yeah. a Plotkin liquor store, 
a Plotkin men's store, and there was a shoe store run by the Plotkin's sister. sister. And an insurance company. Oh, an insurance company. All because the oldest of the Plotkin brothers over there, Louis, uh, who was the uh, oldest of ten children, and sort of took over the, the his his branch of the family, was uh, he he saw himself as the father to all those younger children, and he saw to it that they all had a business or a profession, and he was responsible for seeing to it that those younger children could do that. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the interesting story about Louis, who was my dad's first cousin, is that uh, they were all very bright people. And they had to decide, because they were all very, very, they were dirt poor, they all had to decide that maybe one of them could go to college. Mm -hmm and his name was Harry. He was, he was one of the ten. And the whole family, including Louis and uh, the brothers, some of them who were already in business there, provided the funds to send that one brother t to, to Harvard. Harvard, where he uh, was one of the top students of Felix Frankfurter. And when Felix Frankfurter went to Washington, he saw to it that Harry could go to Washington too, and he became uh, active in the FCC. Federal Communications Commission. Yeah. He was attorney for that commission, and later on he joined the firm of Porter and uh, Fortis, Fortis uh -huh. sure. and was a senior partner with them. Give us your name, please. I'm Charlie Plotkin. Uh, my dad was Isidore. Isidore and Louis were first cousins, both children of brothers, of course. Uh, Izzy, my dad, and Louie had started the furniture business together back around 1918. They were teenage boys. They were 18, 19 years old. And by some uh, discussion between the two boys, they decided they didn't want to be junk dealers anymore as their fathers were. They had earned enough money, so they thought they might open up some sort of a business. They didn't know what business they were going to open up, but they thought they'd go into Boston and find out. So they were on the train to Boston, and they met a man on the train, and he was Jewish, obviously, and he recognized them as two Jewish boys, and he said, what, uh, where are you going, fellas? And they said, well, we're thinking of opening up maybe a clothing store. We're going into Boston to see what we can find out. He said, why do you want a clothing store? He says, I know a man there who sells stoves. And I think if I tell him to give you a hand, he might give you a start. So instead of being clothiers, they went into Boston. They met the guy who sold stoves. The man who sold stoves said, well, my friend, whoever he was, they don't even know his name to this day, said you were good boys and I should give you a hand. I'm willing to, I'm willing to uh, give you a few things on credit. And oh, that's how they became furniture. furniture dealers and appliance dealers <laughs> instead of clothing people. And they opened up a little shop in the middle of Athol. It went fairly well and then they opened up a branch in Orange and that went fairly well. And then uh, Louis got married. And then Louis got married around 24, 25. My father got married around 25. Louis's wife was found for him. It was an arranged marriage. His, his father, uh, who, whose sister lived in Boston, was married to a man, a second marriage for both of them, and the and Louis's father's sister, Aunt Jenny, her new husband had a child, a girl, and they figured that girl and Louis would make a good match. And they put them together and they, they got married. Were they right? No, they, no. Were, they weren't. Oh, she, no. Was, she was not. Complete opposites. She was an opposite type and she was, 
He was outdooring. Uh, yeah. Old people. He was just a wonderful guy. Yeah. Yeah, she was a recluse, more or less. Um, I think she was a little retarded. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was not a love match. It was not a love match, and Louis lived a separate life, but he was always loyal to her. How many? How many he children two, did they? He had two children. And how those? Who were those two children? Uh, those two girls uh, grew up, uh, married guys who uh, Louis took into the business with him. Uh -huh and worked out for not, not a great success story after the next generation. Louis was a wonderful guy. Yeah. And everybody in Orange loved him. He led the baseball teams there. And everybody the called him Boston. Uncle Louis. The fellow Jewish people in Athol was a fellow by the name of Reuben Zass. Reuben Zass didn't like his name and changed it to Reuben Crane. Reuben Crane was an itinerant clothing man. He would sell clothes to farmers and to people in the back countries and then he'd collect a dollar a week and uh, that's why he made his living. In, in his travels he was in Winchenden and in Winchenden he met the, one of the very few Jewish families there, the Noves, who had a uh, similar business. Charlie Nove uh, also uh, sold clothes to people out on the uh, in the countryside with his horse and wagon, filled his wagon with clothes, and then went out into the countryside and and sold clothes to people. And who, who they bought these things for fifty cents a week or a dollar a week, whatever they could afford, maybe a quarter a week in those days. Charlie Nove and Esther had three children. Their oldest was Lillian. And uh, Reuben came back to Athol and he said, Izzy, have I got a girl for you? Her name is Lillian Nove, and she's only 15 miles away in Winchenden. And Izzy, who by this time was in the furniture business by himself, Louis and he decided to split up their businesses. Louis went to Orange. Took the Orange store, my dad took the Athol store. And uh, Izzy went to Winterman, and he and Lillian were smitten with each other. How old was he? Uh, well, he was, well, let's see. He when was, they married, say. He, they were married in 1925, and my father was born in 1901. So he was 24 years old, and my mother was 23. She was born in 1902. The loveliest woman you could ever possibly meet. A real, genteel, lovely, lovely lady. Yeah, she was, she, uh... Everybody loved her. Had, she, he had, she had been chosen as salutatorian of, of Winton and High School which means that she was the second one. She didn't quite make top student. The top student wound up in North Orange, and the two of them used to see each other occasionally uh, all their lives. Yeah. He was a, a, a very nice guy. I, he and his wife used to come into the store once in a while, so we got to know them too. They were a nice couple, and he lived well into his uh, 90s, and my mother lived into her late 90s, what 96. Was it, what was it like for both of you being Jewish in this town? How conscious were you that you were Jewish in a non-Jewish area? Constantly conscious of it, but uh, as far as our relationships with the Gentile community, they were wonderful. We, my mother played bridge with, uh, with two Gentile groups. My dad was extremely popular. Everybody loved him in town. He ran a big business, and it kept getting bigger and bigger because he used to say to people, he'd say, look, things were bad. Stop making your payments. In those days, people made payments. And Thursday nights and Saturday nights were the big payment nights. Sometimes people would have tough times. My father said, well, don't make any payments until things get better. That was a very common thing to happen. In those days, people were not uh, uh, automobile owners. 
they were pretty much loyal loyal customers because they hadn't really didn't have much choice they were they were stuck in their town they were all they were factory workers for the most part and they had their jobs and they had uh, loyalties to those who gave them credit and my father was one of them so they furnished their homes and they paid them as best they could and uh, it, it worked out very well over the years for Izzy Plotkin. And Did you go into the business? Oh yeah, from, from my seventh or eighth year on. My dad said, you want to go to the movies? I'll pay you ten cents an hour and you can work as much as you want and then you can go to the movies and do whatever you want with the money. In fact, he insisted we come in the store. This was his baby and he loved that oh, place. Oh, did he love that business? Oh yeah, that business made his fortune, but he never, he never acted like somebody who made a fortune. He did, always acted Did you like take it over later on? My brother and I took it over when he died. He died very young. He was only 52. Oh. oh. Tell us about your children, their names. Do you have children? We yeah. have six. We had six children. So give us their names. The oldest is Jeffrey, who is now running the business in Athol. Then we had a son, Bruce, who is a judge in Denver, Colorado. Then we had our son, Alan, who died a year and a half ago. Mm. And then we had John, who's in Deerfield and runs our store up in Keene, New Hampshire. And then we had Michael. Who's here tonight. Who's here tonight and lives on Cape Cod. And then we had, finally, our daughter, hmm. Abby, who lives in New York City. So one son runs a store in Keene. Yes. One son runs the store in Athol. Correct. One son died a year and a half ago. Yes. What what business was he in? Music. Uh -huh. He was a musician. Yeah, he had band. He had a band and played all over this area. Uh huh. Up in and Conway the, and uh, Deerfield. Uh huh. Quite a few places in this area. And, and I'm I'm forgetting the oldest one is where. He's Jeff, he runs a store oh, oh. in Athens. There's one in, who's a judge someplace. In Denver, Colorado. So all of these w wonderful family, did they all get married? Four of the six. And uh, are they local uh, local spouses? Or did, did they, they find, find them, them locally or did they find them far away? Uh, no, most of them are local except the one from Colorado. He married a girl from uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Colorado. And we'd like we'd like to trace we, for our interviews generation to generation. Did your children marry Jewish women, or did some marry non-Jewish women? Well, there's a girl too. I mean, and, you, and yeah. your daughter too. Well, our oldest boy married a girl who became Jewish, uh -huh. and a very very good Jew, as a matter of fact. She that's Jewish. Be yeah. Became became president yeah. of the Ladies Aid. Reads Hebrew very well. Uh huh. And uh, very uh, holds the Athol community together. Really. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. She and my son. Uh huh. And the and the Our other one. Son. The other one. The other ones married non-Jewish girls. And how they raise their children? Uh, Nothing. No religion at no, all. No religion. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. not, not just no religion. No, no religion. Not mm -hmm. anti-religion. Not pro-religion. Just but you no religion. Can you can you didn't ask the question the way we wanted it? What was the level of observance of the grand the grandparents, the parents, your generation? Yeah, We're right. trying to figure out what uh, happens. Yeah. Right. My grandparents liked to fill in every morning. Uh huh. He was orthodox, and my grandmother. Who lived? My grandmother and grandfather lived upstairs Over, from, over us. My parents and my grandparents and a bought big the house Victorian together. House. Actually, my father bought the house, but uh -huh. he made his father a partner with him. Uh -huh. My grandparents lived in the upstairs. My parents and I. And so this was a kosher kitchen you all shared. Yeah, my mother's kitchen oh, was kosher. My grandparents' uh -huh. kitchen uh -huh. was and kosher. And we kept kosher. And we kept kosher too uh -huh. because uh -huh. we. Natalie wanted uh, right. her in-laws to feel comfortable in our house. Uh -huh. So Although the level she was not brought up. How is the level of observance of Jewish rituals different from your parents' generation to yours? Oh, considerably. 
because uh, well, your st store was open Saturday. Yeah, that was the, that was the first major break, uh -huh. and when my grandfather finally consented to my father's keeping his store open on Shabbat. By mm -hmm. the way, uh, Charlie's great grandparents were here too. Yeah, my great grandparents were buried in uh, Sharon. Is not it Sharon. not? No, not Sharon. In um, uh, north of Boston, in Woburn. Woburn. Uh -huh. They were buried in Woburn. My great grandfather. They were grandpa. they were out west here, but they were buried in Woburn. Because that was the Jewish cemetery. We didn't have a Jewish cemetery in Athol. Oh. And the Woburn Cemetery was where his sisters and brothers had already how, been buried. How so. do you understand that your great-grandfather and grandmother got to Athol? They came to Athol because three of their children were living in Athol oh. at the time. Their oldest son, this Louis from Orange. Now that was their oldest. That, their, their father, his, whose name also was Louis Plotkin in English different Hebrew names, but Lewis in English. And Lewis, as the oldest son in America, wanted his parents there. Even though he had ten children of his own, he felt he was responsible for his dad. Yeah, but that's your grandfather. No, that was his my grandfather's great. brother. My grandfather's brother, Lewis, took his parents in, to my great-grandparents. Oh, his great-grandparents. And they lived there. What were their names? His name was Shimon, Shimon Pesach, and his wife's name was Sasha. And uh, Plotkin. Plotkin. Yes. Plotkin, of course. Plotkin in Russian. <laughs> or in uh -huh. Do you know what city in Russia they came from? Yeah, they came from Arshipovich, which is a suburb of Bobroisk, which is in Minsk, Gubernia. Uh -huh. But w the mystery to us today, and this is very hard for us to know, is there are four Ashipoviches in the vicinity of Bapraisk, within 50, 60, 70 miles. And we have no idea which Ashipovich they came from. Wow. So uh, we, we don't know how we can find out. We've been, some of us have been looking. All right, I'm initially named Francis, Go uh, Francis Sheckman. And uh, I grew up in Springfield, Mass. And I married in 1952 and married David Goldcher, who came from Athol, Mass. My parents were Jenny and Nathan Sheckman. And, uh, Where did they live? Um, well, we lived in Springfield. Where? Uh, Forest Park Where? section. What street? Shawmut Street. I don't know if you know. We know Forest Park. Where? Shawmut and what? Uh, well, Shawmut had an extension that wasn't paved at that time, so it was further than uh, Washington Street, a little further down. And we could hear the monkeys. <laughs> oh, near the zoo. <laughs> Some sure. nights, yeah. And where, what brought your parents to Springfield? Um, well, my father uh, came from Europe, and initially he was in New York. But he was a cap maker by trade, and my grandfather had a small factory in Springfield. And uh, he heard through the grapevine that he was looking for uh, one person to work in his shop and perhaps sell for him. And uh, that was a time where all gentlemen wore caps. And uh, What was your grandfather's name? Uh, Harris Shupilski. My mother's maiden name was Shupilski. What, where was his shop? Uh, downtown Springfield, called uh, an area called Dwight Street. I think it's still there. Yes, yeah, we know this area. What's yeah. the name of the shop? Do you remember that? I think it went under his name. Uh, it was, you know, just a mama, papa type of operation. But uh, What kind of caps did he make? Um, regular men's, you know, like something they'd wear uh, for many occasions, mm -hmm. you know, not too dressy, something like a golf golfer would wear. When you were little, did you used to go visit your grandparents? Oh, yes. Yeah. Did they live on Dwight Street also? Uh, well, they lived near there, but not... Do you, not do you remember the name of the street? I think it was Osgood Street. 
as I remember. I don't know if those streets yeah, are that. still there. Do you, do you remember going to synagogue with your grandparents? No. Uh, my grandparent, my grandfather was not too religious. He was uh, very much interested in culture, but not a religious person. Mm -hmm. So we grew up in that environment, too. Mm -hmm. But um, when I when I was getting married, my parents had joined a, a Sinai temple in Springfield. Mm -hmm. So your father and your father married the boss's daughter. Right. Well, <laughs> it didn't start out that way. My grandfather wanted his older daughter to uh, team up with my father, but my mother was the beauty, and he fell in love with her. And uh, she, they were married at a, quite a young age. He was about eight years older than my mother, but uh, had a long, happy marriage. But uh, after a couple of years, uh, they went to Minnesota because my father's family were all in Minnesota. And uh, it's an interesting story. How'd that happen? Yeah, how'd that happen? My great-grandfather had come down from Canada that was the time when uh, you couldn't emigrate to the United States. But gradually, I don't know how he got over the border, but I guess wasn't too secure in those days, and uh, he settled in St. Paul. And uh, my father had an opportunity to uh, go to work for a large company. Uh, I think they made caps, among other things. It was called Gordon Ferguson. And uh, he was becoming a family man at that point, uh, had a child on the way, so they... Moved to St. Paul? Yeah, St. Paul. And uh, they had a lot of relatives there at the time. I don't... Well, there's no one that I know of that's still living. So they stayed there? Uh, for a few years, and then my mother got homesick, and they came back to Springfield. But at that point, uh, he... Uh, ended up buying a little grocery business, and uh, we lived on Myrtle Street, which was right near the hospitals. At that time, the Wesson Memorial Hospital was there. And, uh, you know, it, when I was little, young, growing up, uh, everything seemed so large. Now, when I go back, <laughs> everything seems so unusual and tiny. <laughs> what kind of grocery store? What do they sell there? Uh, well, it was like a con little convenience store, a little bit of everything. Um, Did you work uh, there too as you got older? No, no. By that time, my father went into manufacturing. Uh, things changed. <laughs> what was the name of the grocery store? Uh, I think it went under his name, Sheckman Groceries. What year are we talking about? Uh, well, approximately. Uh, when I came to Springfield, uh, it's probably 1933. I was born in 1928, and I might have been five year, about four or five when that happened. I was born in New Jersey, and my parent, when they left Minnesota, they didn't come directly to Springfield. They s stayed in uh, New Jersey, and uh, it was a short stint in New York. So your father did not go back into the hat cap no, business? No, no. What, what did he, he did manufacturing of what? Uh, ladies' dresses. <laughs> he was very good, you know, in sewing, and uh, he didn't uh, manufacture for himself. He did contract work for various companies. I don't think they're in existence today, but... Uh, this was through the 30s, 1930s and 40s he was doing this? Yeah. Did he, did he serve in the military? No. And do you have siblings? I had a sister and a brother. Can you tell both us their, older, yeah. Yeah, their names? My sister was Irma. My brother was Alfred. Did they marry and have children too? Uh, my sister never had a family. My brother had two boys. And, uh, where, where are they? The Shapulskis? No, uh, Shekman. Oh, there's Shekman, sorry, yeah, right. Yeah, Shapilsky was my your mother's, your mother's name. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, my brother. So unfortunately, one boy is not, uh, he has 
mental problem and he's in an institution. My brother uh, divorced his first wife and remarried and uh, I used to see the younger boy, but he's grown up now. I, he still lives in Florida near his mother. So you're, you're living in Springfield at this point and how did, where did you go to high school? I went to a classical high school which uh, was on State Street mm -hmm. and uh, that has been, uh, it became a uh, fashionable condo building now in the schools. I think they um, mer they didn't merge, but technical and classical or in near uh, Blunt Park, I think. Uh -huh. Did your parents go to synagogue? Your parents? No. Not, not at all? Until, well, they did later on. But not, not when you were a teenager? No, not when I was So you had very little Jewish connection? I went to Jewish school. Oh, they had did? a workman's circle. My father was uh, quite active in in, uh, in the workman's circle. In Springfield? Yeah. Where was that? That was, uh, oh dear, what's the street name? Oh. It, the street is gone now. It's um, near uh, where they had the car, the uh, trolley cars, uh, uh -huh. and there's a Greek Orthodox church. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was called um, mm, Brown. <laughs> was it an active workman circle? Lots of people? Well, they had uh, quite a few uh, members at that time. Did you, did you learn Yiddish? Yes. You learned Yiddish there? Yeah. Can you remember your teachers? Yeah, uh, Mr. Traster. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, he had a daughter, Sarah. <laughs> and um, on Sundays, we would have um, ballet instruction. We had someone that taught dancing, and uh, it was, I skipped a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. I wasn't the best student, uh -huh. but I I was able to learn to write In and Yiddish. read haltingly, but uh -huh. but uh, I've been studying Hebrew now, and it, it's helped me a little. Uh -huh. This was 1940s when you went to the Workman's Circle? I'm trying to place yeah. it in time. Yeah, yeah 1940. 1940 was the World's Fair. Yeah. yeah I, I didn't go, go on. Uh, you know. So you went to high school, and what did you think you were going to do with your life when you well, were? Well, I wanted to. I was always interested in science, so I uh, pursued science and went to UMass. Yeah. I majored in microbiology, you know, and uh, I worked for several years before I got married. And uh, what did you work at? Uh, well, I worked at the Westfield Sanatorium. Um, they had a TB and cancer hospital. And uh, after I married, I worked for a short while. And uh, uh, I moved to Athol. My husband came from Athol. How did you meet your husband? Oh, a friend of ours, one of the girls that I grew up with was related on her husband's side to my husband's family and uh, she wanted me to meet this cousin and I was not really in the mood to have a blind date. I said, I'm sick of them, I don't want to go and I finally condescended to go and, uh, and we had an immediate attraction and you know, my husband uh, passed away uh, 12 years ago. You know, so I've been a widow. But I left um, Athol six years, and I've been living in uh, East Hampton, the Lathrop. And what was it like moving to Athol from, from Springfield and where you well, were? Well, it was a big change. <laughs> it was a small town, but when we were first married, we had a large uh, group of friends, and uh, kids grew up, you know, with lakes and skiing nearby, so it was a good, a good life. Can you give us some of the names of your Jewish friends from Athol and what they did for Well, living? the Plotkin family was right. predominant in Athol. They were all related to one another. And I'm sure Charlie told you about right. that. Uh -huh. uh, and I was one of the few outsiders. Uh, my husband's um, family had, uh, there was one couple, Dr. Glazer, 
Well, you know Marty Glazer. Right. Yeah, his parents were relative. They were cousins. So um, I was friendly with Florence, his mother, and uh, we had a lot of good times. But things have changed, and there everybody's left now. There really is no life in Athol. Well, yeah, sorry. They, what was was that when you were there? Was um, the synagogue the center of activity? Yes. Yeah. We, for for religious things or for social stuff? Well, it was a combination. Mm -hmm. We used to have cabarets, and we had a lot of good time. When my husband was uh, younger and before he was uh, came down with multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. so he was no longer able to do a lot. But um, we used to dance and feed the whole community, and uh, we'd be in the cast. For the programs plus. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did you have a rabbi at the Athol? Yes. What was the rabbi's name? Do you remember? Oh, they had a whole a slew of rabbis, but uh, the last one was Rabbi Lazarus. He was quite orthodox, but a very nice man. But uh, I don't know that the kids really got the education that they do today. Uh huh. You know, if when they had a bar mitzvah, they the last few months they'd be studying, whereas here you're very well prepared. <laughs> On a typical Shabbos, how many people would show up in the shul? Well, we had a Friday night service. And that's what you had? Yeah, we didn't usually have Saturday morning. And how many would show up? Well, we oh. always went, even though uh, I wasn't particularly religious, but uh, my husband liked to go, and we always took the children. Uh -huh. <laughs> Steve would fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they all had bar mitzvahs there. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. It's quite a big synagogue. Oh yes. It's a major yeah. synagogue. I know they're still trying to maintain it, but uh, fortunately there were funds left. Otherwise, I don't think they could uh, afford to uh, hire how, people. How many families do you think are left there now? Well. Um, a handful? Just about, but they do have people that come in from Fitchburg and quite a few intermarried couples. You know. But uh, whether they contribute, I'm not sure about that. Tell us the names of your children and what they do for a living. Well, and, I, um, go ahead. I have four children. Yeah. And my oldest one is Alan. Uh, they're all here today. Um, Alan works for the Federal Aviation in the Boston area. Next one is Byrne, and he lives in Harvard, and he's a dentist, general dentist. And then Steve, who is periodontist. And then we have a daughter, Andrea, who lives in Andover. And uh, Steve has the three. Is she children. a dentist too? No. Oh, wait a minute. Andrea. No, no, she's not. <laughs> right uh -huh. now she's busy with her, they have twins, uh -huh. and uh, she has not gone back. She was a social worker, but uh -huh. uh, pretty tied up with her family. So in terms of the level of Jewish observance, when you look at your children and how they're raising their children, how does it appear to you? Well. Um, as soon as the children were old enough, they all have joined temples. Uh, the Andover tem tem um, Temple, where my daughter is, had a lot of uh, appeal to them because the rabbi came from Springfield, and he, uh, when he was a student, he used to help in our temple. So he officiated when Andrea had her bat mitzvah, and. Uh, and then he also participated or uh, conducted a uh, baby naming, and so they feel very close to him. What's his name? Uh, Robert, Rob, well, Robert Goldstein. Yeah, he has family in Longmeadow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So your four children married Jews? Yes. And they're raising all their children? It seems like these children, the, the, the ones whose bat mitzvah, the, the Stevens children, seem to be getting more 
Jewish education than the generation before, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I don't know, you know, how religious they will be, but mm -hmm. uh, at least they have a background. And I know my oldest grandson, Jeremy, uh, Steve, Stephen Franz, son, um, went on, he had a good experience in Israel. Mm -hmm. Was it last year? Yeah, last summer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I think he has an appreciation for Jewish customs. I don't think we have that your husband was a dentist. No, my husband wasn't. So what, what did he, what was his business? Well, he studied history and he really wanted to be a history teacher. He had uh, pursued law, he went to law school, but decided that wasn't for him. <laughs> And uh, then when his parents got older, they had a business in Athol, and he kind of felt that he had to take over the business. So he went into a field that he really didn't enjoy. But, what was that? Uh, they had a men's clothing store. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah? Yeah, in Athol. What was it called? Golcher's Clothing. Yeah. And what street was it on? Well, they um, initially were on one side of the main street, yeah. but that was in the days when they had a lot of stores in Athol. Uh -huh. Today, <laughs> there isn't one left. There are no clothing stores. So what years did you, his parents have the clothing store, and when, and when did he work there? Well, uh, when we were first married, uh, his parents were retired, and they would go to Florida for the winter, and uh, so he you know, took over the business, but that was before he got ill. Uh -huh. And uh, when my youngest child uh, was three, um, I had to leave my work and go into the store because he uh, wasn't well. So you took over running the men's store? Uh, not in the very beginning, because for a while he was able to right. maintain it. But a few years later, I had to take over the business. And what became of that store? Well, we just, um, about three years, no, four years before he passed away, we decided to uh, just go run a going out of business sale. Uh -huh. We had moved to a shopping, small shopping center in Athol, and uh, things weren't, go you know, it wasn't the attraction that, the big discount stores had come in, and small mom and papa stores were just fading. Okay, okay. my name is Doris Chase. My maiden name was Levine, and I was born February 29, 1928. My name is Irving Chase, and my, I was born August 12, 1926, and uh, what else you want to know? At the Mercy Hospital. Okay. Uh, I think it was Mercy Hospital. Well, okay. was born Let's do back and forth. Your parents' names. My mother was Lillian Wazan. My father was Max Levine. And where did they come um, from? My father came from Russia when he was 10 years old. And they lived in New York City at the beginning. And my mother was born in New York City. What else can I tell what you? What brought them to Springfield? Uh, my father, well, they met in New York. Mm -hmm. My mother was a bookkeeper. And they met somehow in the same business. And uh, then my father, they moved to Watertown, New York. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they, I think he, he used to work for the Samuel That's stores. Why. And he wanted to open up his own business. I don't know why he came to Springfield. What is the Samuel stores? I don't, it's clothing, uh -huh. clothing and things like that. Is and that the business he opened? He opened uh, a clothing store. Where was it? Uh, in Springfield. Where? It was a credit. It was a credit business. Where? 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 where it was are called the Star Clothing. What, what street? street? Main Street. It Main was street? on Main Street. <clears throat> yeah, years and years ago. Which so until the flood came. What does that mean? It was a credit store. Tell us what that means. House to house credit. House business. to house credit, which a lot of people did in, in those, those days. days. In other words, you'd buy fifty cents a week. You know? You'd buy something and you'd pay it off. Right. Terrible business. Would he go to their house every week and yeah. collect? Yeah. Yeah. And his brother was. That was in, part of it. Part his of His brother was in business, business with him. And, he, you know, uh, finally the flood came, and. Uh, he had to give up the store on, the, on Main Street, 
and but eventually he went back into it. It was a terrible business. Really. Okay, let's switch to it's to old. your your parents. Uh -huh. My what, parents, my father, names? my father was Albert Chase. My mother's maiden name was Florence Goldshire. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my father was a tailor. And uh, he came to Springfield because he had known someone over in the old country who settled in Springfield. Tell her who it was. Uh, Nathan Cohen. Nathan Cohen. The jeweler. Yeah. What? What? Where did they come from? Where did he come from? He came from Russia. My mother came from Poland. Yeah. Do you know where in Russia? No. Okay. But he knew this Nathan Cohen. Right. On, the, on the boat. On the boat they <laughs> met. And he said, "I'm going to Springfield." Uh, I think he uh, spent a little time in New York first, but he ended up coming to coming to Springfield. So really where where was your first home that you remember? So my home was in Springfield. Where? Maryland Street. Where is that near? Forest Park. And why did they move to Forest Park, do you know? Well, he uh, bought a house, a two-family house during the Depression for $2,300. Uh-huh. Two-family home. And he was a tailor? Yeah. He was making a living as a tailor? Yes. Where did he have his shop? Uh, Vernon Street. Vernon. Well, the last place was on Vernon Street in Springfield. And before that? He was on Main Street before Also? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And he could make a living as a tailor. Was there much competition, do you know? What did, he did, he, he didn't did make the, a big living. He did the police uniform. Oh yeah, one he time, did. one time he had a contract with the police department. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did he teach you the business? No. What, what did he? What did he expect you to do? I want to hear what you say. I don't know. I I know. Uh -huh. go ahead. They told him either he works for his father. He was twelve years old, uh -huh. or go out oh, and get I your see. own job. So he went out and get his own, got his own job. And what was he that? He didn't want to be a Selling tailor. Newspapers. <laughs> Selling newspapers. <laughs> Eleven years old. 12. In Springfield. No, yeah. I started when oh, I was really? 11. And what were you selling? What paper? Springfield newspaper. And how much was it? Two cents. Two cents. Maybe they give you a nickel and you made a profit for yourself. <laughs> Sometimes. Right? Right. Right. Yeah. And how long did you do that for? I did it probably for maybe two or three years. You mean this was a part-time profession? Well, he was in well, school. I did it after While you were in school, yeah. you would sell papers. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. And yeah. then, and then, what happened? I graduated high school. And then, yeah. Uh -huh. No, before I, uh, when I got old enough, I had a job at Carter's Shoes. I sold salvage. shoes. Abe, Abe and uh, Kutzi Salvage. Yeah. They were well known in Springfield. That was on Main Street. These are Jewish people? Yes. Yeah. They were well known in terms of their business? or Yes, their... yes. Uh -huh. In fact, their brother had manufactured shoes in uh, New Hampshire. And he would sell them to these stores down in uh, Springfield? Yeah, that was part of it, yeah. And you were a salesman? Yeah. They had a lot of wonderful stores in Springfield. They were all gone. Tell us the names of some of those stores. Oh, they had Forbes and Wallace, Albert Steiger, uh, Muriel's. Carter uh, Shoes. Carter uh, Shoes. What did Muriel's sell? Uh, ladies' clothes. Mm. I used to work for them. And, and Steiger's is also clothes. Yeah, yeah. clothes. Men's and women's. Forbes. What else? Uh, there were a lot of shops. Forbes is uh, clothes. Yeah, that but was there a were a department. lot of other shops at the other end. Johnson's Bookstore. Oh, sure. That was theirs? Yeah. Oh, was yours. No, no. No, but that was on Main Street. Oh, Main Street. These are yeah. stores on Main Street. Oh, yeah. yeah they were. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of some of the other. Capitol Theater on Main Street. Right. That's that, why I know the Capitol Theater. I was, I had gone to the movie with some kids. When I came out of the movies, at that time I was maybe 12 years old, 13 years old, the war had broken out. And I was selling newspapers at the time. Right. So we had to go sell the extras, you know, the uh -huh. newspapers. So I remember the breakout of the war very, very real. And uh, when I got out of high school, I enlisted in the Navy because I didn't want to get drafted. I knew I was going to go and I Bless you. Tight. Thank you. And I preferred the Navy, so I enlisted in the Navy. How old were you? <coughs> uh, just 18. They were all out of high school. They all went. All the yeah. kids, they all wanted to As soon to as go. I turned 18, I enlisted. So you got into the Navy. Where'd they, where'd you, where were you stationed? I went to boot tramp at Sampson, New York, and then I, they sent me to pharmacy corps school in San Diego. Pharmacy school? Do you know Norman nothing. Winston? Who? Norm Winston, pharmacist in Northampton. No. So you ended up being a pharmacist? Oh. Well, I had gone to technical high school in Springfield, so I was very good at chemistry. Uh -huh. So when you go into the service, they give you IQ tests. Right. And evidently, that's what they, I didn't pick it, they sent me there. So your years in the Navy were as a pharmacist? Yeah. Working, uh -huh. I was there for two years. Where were you then stationed? I was in San Diego originally, and then 
before the war ended, I was at the Chelsea Naval Hospital. Uh -huh. Hingham. Uh -huh. Weren't you in Hingham? Well, that was the ammunition dump. Oh. So, it, so I, when you came out of the uh, out of the Navy, did you remain as a pharmacist? I went into I went to pharmacy school. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. I, I never would have gone to college if it wasn't for that. They didn't have the money. Uh -huh. You got the GI Bill? Sure. I see. And then, yeah. and then you finished pharmacy school, and what did you do? Well, I worked for a couple of years for people, then I opened my own store. What was it called? Summers Pharmacy. And where was that? Summers, Connecticut. It's oh, it's still Summers. there. It's still there. He was the token Jew. Can you tell me more about that? <laughs> well, was, there wasn't any Jews there. Very few. How come they hired you? I yeah. opened up my own I store. Oh, it was your store. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. In Summers, Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, Steinberg yeah. is also a... Uh, I'm trying to think who is that the pharmacist in Longmeadow or something. Well, he was in Springfield originally. Oh, Steinberg? Yeah. Yeah. He was on Allen Street, remember? Uh, so you were in Summers, Connecticut. Right. But living where? In Longmeadow. In Longmeadow and commuting. That well, we lived, we lived there for originally. one year. It wasn't that far. We tried Summers, Connecticut, but there wasn't any Jews there. I, I wanted my kids to go to Hebrew school. Uh -huh. I found it very difficult. Uh -huh. And the pharmacy so, still exists? Yeah. And, you, and how many years did you run it? Did you have it? Approximately. 33 years. 33 years. Uh -huh. and the there wasn't even a building there. At what point did you two marry? 1948. How'd but in meet? the story that we've just been hearing. Oh, he had two more years of school and I had one more year of college. And this when is when you married, two met. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, we met in, uh, was it 47, 48? I don't uh -huh. know. Uh-huh, 47. And, but we... Uh, and I and we lived with my mother. She was a widow uh, for eight years. I had all my kids there. He wanted to go in business, and we paid my mother so much a week. She was a widow. She was glad to have us. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was his goal to open up his own store, and uh, it was not easy. But he did it. It's easier then than it is now. I mean, you could borrow oh, money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't borrow today like you could borrow then. The so what are the names of your children? I have Mar Marjorie, Richard, and Howard. Marjorie, where, so where is Marjorie? Marjorie lives in Milton, Mass. She, she married? She works for Pfizer. Is she huh? not married? She's divorced. Not okay. married, she's divorced. She has children? No. no. Okay. Too bad because uh, she would have made a great mother, but she's very close to... Uh, one of my granddaughters, uh -huh. very close. So the other, the next son is. Who? Uh, I have Richard in Long Meadow. Right. What does he do for? He's a, uh, he's, he's an accountant down. and a, uh, a financial advisor in uh, partner, Myers Brothers. Myers Brothers collecting some yeah. partner. Uh huh. And then I have. Does a he son have children? Is he married? Yes, he has Carly and Richard. Uh, uh -huh. Carly and uh, Danny. Danny. How old are they? About the children? Well, one is 22. Oh, they're grown up. She just graduated, Skidmore. Skidmore. Oh, nice. Yeah. And the other one's at University of Vermont. He's going into his third year. Uh -huh. So Richard married a local girl? No, no, she's from North Dartmouth. Lovely girl. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She works, speech therapist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the third child? And her father yeah. was a part-time cantor. And, and a talk had show. His, had his own talk show in New and Bedford. Radio. What's the name? His Lip. Name? Stan Lip. Lip. Stan, Stan Lip. Stan Lip. Okay. And the third child? Howard. Is married? Yes. yes. He has two daughters and he lives in uh, Framingham. What does he do? And he's in business, uh, Hub Materials. He's also a CPA, but he's in business. You had said something about you were raised Orthodox and you were not. Can you tell us? Can you tell us about your upbringing in, in the religious world? Very religious. Well, yeah, I'd like to hear about my that. My parents were very religious. Where'd you go to? Where'd they go to shul? Kadima. Can you remember your days at Kadima? What sure. it was like? Who the rabbi was? Rabbi and what, Klein. What was the education like? Hebrew school. Well, it was a typical Hebrew education. Did you study Talmud? Did you just or basics? How far? Did basic. You know? Just basics. Yeah. After my Prayer, bar mitzvah, I dropped out. Basically. Dropped out. They didn't want you to. Though. No. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> I was very Americanized. Uh huh. They uh couldn't -huh. understand that. But your parents were Orthodox. Yes. Uh huh. They never ate out. They never went to a movie. Uh -huh. They were very orthodox. Right. They strictly by the book. Uh -huh. Was your mother's hair covered? No. No. She didn't go that far. Uh -huh. She used to work with his father, too. She did sewing. Yeah. She worked with him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Were they active in Kadima? Slightly. They were They were members, let's put it that way. Uh-huh. They uh, went there on high holidays and... When his later years, when he retired, he used to go more often. Oh. But he was Orthodox. He put yeah. out the fill every day? Yeah. Like that? Well, not every day, no. Uh -huh. 
He no. used to go to B'nai Jacob when he was when when your mother died. Well, he went to the Gedima when I, uh, before you, B'nai Jacob. You mentioned the Yiddish school there. Oh, the Arbiter Ring I used to go. To. Oh, you went there? Yeah. Where was it? It was on Round Hill in Springfield, off of uh, what's that street? I don't know. Karoo, Chapin Terrace. No, no, it's. Uh, I don't know because I never. It's off of it. Columbus Avenue. Was this with the Workman Circle or separate? Right. Yeah. With the Workman Circle. Arbiter Ring. It's yeah, yeah. Workman Circle. Right. So tell us what you learned there. Jewish. <laughs> Yiddish. I became flu fluid in Yiddish. Have you had opportunity to use it? Not really. In the pharmacy with all your customers. <laughs> no. My customers weren't Jewish. I know. <laughs> did they know you were Jewish, your customers? Yeah. What was How that? did they know that? They learned. I don't know. And what was that like? Did you ever experience any? They loved no. them. They loved you. Was the He's place open on Saturday? Yep. From the beginning? Seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. But and you worked it the whole seven days? Well, when I first started, sure. So did your parents disapprove? No, they had nothing to do with it. They I knew th I was going to I business. I think they were proud of you that you opened up a store. No, I meant that we're about talking being about open the religious on, thing. Being open on Shabbos? No. no. Oh, My father worked yeah. on Shabbos. Your father did? Sure. Oh. Okay. They needed the money. I see. Now, so you were a school teacher, you said? Yeah. How'd that happen? What was it? Well, I, I had one, when we got married, I had one more year of school, and I said to my mother, I think I'll quit. We need the money, you know? She says, don't quit. You don't stick it out. You know, you need the security. It's the best advice I ever had. So I did, and uh, because he was still going to school. And uh, when I graduated, which was 49, you couldn't get a job for love or money. You wouldn't hire Our Lady of teachers. Elms. You they wouldn't get a hire job. a married woman. That's right. And they wouldn't hire you if you were inexperienced. And I had no experience. So what happened? So uh, I looked and looked. None of my friends could get a job. And then in the summer, I went to Springfield College and took a couple of uh, courses in elementary education because my field was junior high. And I happened to meet the school superintendent's daughter in law from Westfield. And she said, You know, I couldn't even get a job in Westfield. My father-in-law is the superintendent, but there's an opening in Russell, Mass. You know where Russell is? In the Berkshires. North of here. So you went? So I, she said, there's an opening. I got a job in fifth and sixth. There's an opening in third and fourth. Why don't you apply? I didn't drive a car then. So I called, and I got an appointment, and he drove me up there in his 39 junkie Ford. <laughs> so, I had a, an interview with the superintendent and the school committee, and then they said, wait outside, and they hired me. And I came out and said, I can't believe I got the job for third and fourth. He said, but how am I going to get out here? He said, don't worry, we'll find a way. I took the interstate bus for two That's years crazy. back and forth. <laughs> I'd take the, he would drive me down, I'd take the 5 or 7 bus, get there at 7.30, <clears> have tea with the janitor, the first one in the building. I would be the last one out of the building at 5.30 get in Springfield about six or five after six. I did that for two years until I... Uh, you were young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was happy. to. I, that was the best thing I did. I had the experience. And then I had my family, and then I went back to school and got my master's. And then they begged me to come back in Springfield. <laughs> uh -huh. There was a teacher shortage. I see. So I subbed all over the city. And then I went back steady when my youngest was in third grade. Which school were you teaching at? I taught in Indian Orchard Elementary for 68. When did I go back? A couple of years, anyway. No, it was more than. Anyway, right. I taught in Indian Orchard Elementary, and then eventually I went to East Lime Meadow. So I had 26 years. Where do you go to, to synagogue now? Do you Bethel. Go? Bethel. Bethel. Why did you choose that of all the different possibilities? When we decided, our family, you know, that we needed to join a synagogue, he wanted Kadima. Now, my grandfather used to belong to Kadim. He was very religious. What was uh, his name? What was his? Jacob Levine. Uh -huh. That goes way back. And uh, I was brought up conservative. I didn't want to. I said, I'm not, I don't want to join an Orthodox. I said, let's join the Reform. <laughs> That's what I wanted to join. Uh -huh. He said, no, I'm not going to join a Reform. They don't wear what? Yeah, because yeah. Well, when I was in the service, I went to a... He didn't like it. I went, when I was in San Diego, I was there during the Young Kipper. Uh -huh. and I wanted to go to a synagogue, so someone sent me to a synagogue. It turned out to be Reformed. And I wasn't used to them not wearing yarmulkes or anything else. Right. So that sort of turned me a little bit. 
So I now said, well, I think it's you know I don't think anything. Yeah, right. Now I said we'll okay. have to go in the middle of the, the middle court. We'll have to go to conservative. That's right. That's, that's it. Because we wanted to give our children a Jewish education. She tricked you. No, I think is. she tricked you. <laughs> well, now my now my son belongs to Reform. Okay. Uh huh. They love Rabbi Shapiro. Uh, He's nice. a nice man. He's a nice man. Yeah, yeah. And I used to teach Sunday school both at Bethel and Sinai, so I knew Rabbi Snyder too. And but uh, he didn't want reform, so uh -huh. it's too late for us to get out. Uh huh. You know, we have, my folks are buried at the Bethel. His folks are buried in the oh, city, city of homes. homes. City homes. Right. So uh -huh. we're not gonna. It's too late for us to join anything else. Another question. Did you experience any anti-Semitism in your lives in Springfield or anywhere else? I did a little bit. Can you I talk? think when we were kids. Can you talk well, about it a little bit? We used to have uh, we used to have a basketball team, our Jew, uh, AZA. Mm -hmm. And at one time, we used to play basketball at Trinity Church. Are you familiar with that? In no. Springfield? Sumner Avenue. They had a gymnasium. So we, and at one time, uh, some... Catholic youths got uh, wind of the fact they had a Jewish team there. So one day we came out and we had a nice fight. What year is that again? Oh, oh God. Years, when we were is that kids. 1930s? 20s? Had to be in the 30s. Had to be in the Early 30s. 30s, I'd say. Did they call you names? They just fought with you? Sort of. I think they did. Uh -huh. We used to have a, and, uh, we used to have Holy Name Church. You know where Holy Name Church is? At Spring the X. Bay. And yeah. uh, when we were kids, they would throw garbage on the front porch. I lived at the corner of uh, Carver and Fountain. I there was, was anti-Semitism, but it wasn't a lot. It no, was, you know, but it was now we little. don't find that. Isn't that funny? Now we don't, as we grew well, up. the kids uh, from the Catholic religion were, you know, were uh, sort of, you know, Jews are harm, harmful and that type of thing. You know? uh -huh. What's happening in Springfield in your view? What's happened to the Jewish community there? You know, why? What happened? What's your understanding? I think, of I think basically they sought to better themselves. And it was, Springfield was sort of a ghetto. It wasn't a ghetto, but sort of. So they moved out to a better homes, like Long Meadow, East Long Meadow. Some moved to uh, uh, maybe up in Northampton. When they started busing kids. Yeah. I think the parents were afraid. Their kids were not fighters, and you had, you know, segregation. When they, when they started busing kids. And uh, now I could see the writing on the wall. I was teaching in the Springfield schools. I didn't want my, my kids were not fighters, and that's why we moved. I didn't like that busing. Uh -huh. So we moved. But A lot of people did. So we Why moved. now are they closing the synagogues? What do you think is well, happening? Not less and less. Less and less uh, people, are, Jewish people around this area. I don't think... So wait a second, your children all left the area. No, one no. stayed. One stayed and he joined the reform. And he lives in Long Meadow. Yes. Yeah. But I don't know if his children will stay. He's here. president of Jewish Geriatrics. Uh -huh. Does that I mean anything to you? Sure. <laughs> so the, the I Let's think make sure we have a place to go. I, I think many Jewish uh, people got disillusioned too with the... With the uh, they don't go as much. They don't go to, to the synagogue, synagogue as right. much. How come? I don't know. Do your children go to synagogues? Um, no, not I don't know if Richard, my daughter-in-law does. I don't know if my son goes a lot. Mm -hmm. I know they go in the they go on the high holidays. Yeah, but the, the, are, they, my are, they, are they are they are they are they raising their children? Oh sure. Oh, yeah. So how could they do that without going to synagogue? Oh, they go, but they don't go a lot. Their kids are one is twenty two. Oh, oh no, right, they're grown up. One is uh, twenty, one is twenty two. No, but up until when they were littler. I mean. Oh, they went oh, when yeah. they were little. Oh. I'm disappointed in my little one because he went when the kids were uh, bas mitzvah, they had big bas mitzvah, and then they quit mm -hmm. in, the, in the Boston area. I, I said, why? Why, got why did why. you quit? Oh, he says, it's a lot of money to go once, twice a year. It's a, they didn't go all the time. Uh -huh. That's what's going on. They don't go every Friday night. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you go every Friday night? No, we go, we go every Shabbos. Do you? That's, yeah, that's good. See, that's wonderful. Yeah. Now, my friend Naomi and Mickey, they go a lot. Mm -hmm. I never did. Holiday, I'll be honest basically. with you. Mm -hmm. I never did. Mm -hmm. and, and all your children married Jews? My daughter didn't, and that, that ended up in a divorce. 
My, my sons married Jewish girls. And they've been uh -huh. married about 25, 26 years already. One of my daughter-in-laws is more religious than the other <laughs> because her father was a, a cantor <laughs> and she follows it, you know, mm -hmm. and he, and it's nice. I think it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I was brought up in a very liberal household. My father's father was very religious and I think my father had had it up to mm -hmm. here because my mother used to tell me she asked him, if, do you want me to keep a kosher home when she married him? He said, no, I had it up to here. And most of his brothers and sisters joined the Reformed Shul. Mm -hmm. But they had too much of it, I guess. Uh -huh.